Hello, and welcome to Cine Crisis. Released in 1955, Revenge of the Creature is the second film in the Creature from the Black Lagoon series, and although it's not as distinctively unique and compelling as the original film, it still manages to hold its own and be a respectable and fun monster movie romp. After a new expedition to the Amazon manages to finally capture the elusive Gilman, they bring him back to civilization for further study at a marine water park in Florida. But of course, the monster gets loose and terrorizes the inhabitants of the surrounding area, kidnapping a young female scientist along the way. What I think distinguishes this movie among many of the other Monster on the Loose movies of the day, it makes it particularly memorable, is its setting. Whereas the first creature movie was set in the Amazon rainforest in the isolated Black Lagoon, Revenge brings the monster to our world and throws him right in the middle of a Florida water park. You can definitely see the inspiration for Jurassic World right here on screen, as executives try to turn the untamable Gilman into an attraction for kids to see before he gets loose and runs amok in the park. As the movie begins, it really does have a strong sense of continuity with the first film, as we rejoin Captain Lucas and the Rita, traveling back to the Black Lagoon on another expedition to capture the Gilman, except this time, they actually do. However, there are some stark differences with the first film. First is the pacing. The original Creature from the Black Lagoon was for sure a suspense picture at its core. There was a strong buildup of tension and dread as we led into the full reveal of the monster, getting more and more bit by bit before the film's climactic moments. Moving at an almost leisurely pace, the first creature had a sort of dreamlike quality to it. Revenge has a different overall strategy in mind and moves at a breakneck pace. It definitely wants to be more of a shock and awe monster romp. The creature is fully showcased within the first few minutes of the film here and has significantly more screen time in the movie overall. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't point out Revenge of the Creature's most historically important trivia tidbit, and that's that it features the first on-screen appearance of Clint Eastwood in an uncredited cameo role as a clumsy lab assistant. In my original review for Creature, I mentioned the parallels I thought the movie had with King Kong. That trend is continued here in Revenge as the Gilman is brought into captivity and put on display before he gets loose and wreaks havoc, just as Kong did. Jack Arnold returns as the director for Revenge, and I credit him and the screenwriters for not simply just rehashing the same exact movie as they did with Creature from the Black Lagoon. And although the director returned, the cast is almost completely exchanged in this movie, and the substitution of John Agar and Laurie Nelson for Richard Carlson and Julia Adams is acceptable, but they're not overall as satisfying an on-screen couple, and they lack the gravitas and charisma that those original performers brought to their film. There's also a much greater emphasis on having the Gilman make the transition to land in this movie. The original film really focused on showing him in the water, but Revenge wants to showcase the creature's prowess on land as well, and allows for a different dynamic here than in its predecessor. To be sure, Revenge of the Creature is still a classic and fun universal monster movie, while it never really hits the high marks that the original Creature from the Black Lagoon did, it still has enough charm and new ideas to make it memorable and entertaining for horror movie fans of all ages. And for that, I give Revenge of the Creature 3 stars out of 4. If you like this review, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time.